Hey, welcome to a new video. I'm John. And I'm Tom. For today's video, we have recapped the movie, Dead Mind, one of the greatest action horror movies. So relax and enjoy the video. In the opening scene, a group of pirates are seen resting and relaxing after a successful raid. One of them walks deeper into the forest to relieve himself when he spots a strange metal mass on the ground. Upon investigating further, he stumbles upon a dark cave. He curiously ventures inside to explore, but the ground beneath him suddenly trembles, causing him to be sucked into a hole. The scene then cuts to the son of a millionaire, Warren Price, who is on a mission to explore a former Japanese military bunker on the island of Una Una in Indonesia. He is accompanied by his beautiful girlfriend, Su Ling, and a Japanese scientist, Ri. The three of them are escorted by a team of mercenaries, including Captain Tino Prawa, Dioko Ario, and Sergeant Papa Snake. Also joining the mission is Stanley, a former military engineer who became a mercenary attached to Tino's unit. At one point of their journey, the group becomes alarmed when they hear screams from a cave. However, it turns out to be Sergeant Papa playing a prank on them. Seeing this, Warren scolds the captain for the way his men are acting, but Tino assures him that it won't happen again. Following this, Warren and the scientists delve into the cave to investigate, and the latter claims that they're nearing their goal. Outside, Stanley is curious about the mission's exact purpose and turns to Tino for answers. However, the captain admits he doesn't know and prefers to remain unaware. After a brief inspection of the cave, all of them continue hiking deeper into the forest until they stumble upon an entrance of a dead mine. Ree speculates that it was once operated by the Dutch, but it was taken over by the Japanese after the Second World War. Warren continues the speculation, saying that the mine was repurposed into a military bunker, which is exactly what they're looking for. But before entering, Stanley informs them that he needs to check the place first, since there are signs of recent seismic activity. After this, the engineer begins his inspection, while the others wait outside. Stanley then asks Ree about how she ended up working for Warren, but the latter remains tight-lipped, only stating that she's conducting her own research. While waiting outside the bunker, the group is suddenly ambushed by some pirates who open fire on them. In a desperate bid to save themselves, the group is forced to enter the bunker, even though Stanley isn't done checking. Ario, who gets in last, realizes too late that a grenade has been thrown at him. As a result, a huge explosion takes place, knocking them out. When everyone regains consciousness, they find Ario injured severely. Stanley draws their attention to the collapsed entrance, which has trapped the group inside the mine. He mentions that they can't go out from where they entered. According to him, they can descend into the mine, but there's no guarantee that there's another way out. He's a pirate too. Captain Obvious. The group soon gets into an argument regarding whether their encounter with the pirates was a coincidence. They then confront Warren, demanding to know what they're exactly looking for. The latter tries to ignore them, but when the group threatens to harm him, he eventually complies. Warren explains that he, with Rhea's assistance, decoded a set of documents that led them to their current location. He goes on to reveal that they're actually looking for a Japanese military commander's treasure, which is worth millions. Stanley disputes the existence of such treasure, but Warren knows that it's real. The two soon get into an argument, but Tino interrupts them, saying that they have to prioritize getting out of here first. After this, the group makes their way deeper into the mine. As they cross a bridge, the lights around them suddenly turn on, and a song of war propaganda starts blaring. Everybody's confused about how this happened, since they're under the assumption that the mine has been untouched for decades. However, Stanley takes this as a positive sign, thinking that it might indicate there's another way out. Continuing on their way, they come across a room with bottles, hazmat suits, and disturbing old photos. While investigating the room, Warren and Rees notice a map stuck on the wall. During this, a figure wearing a gas mask is seen standing behind the sergeant, but it disappears. The markings on the map refer to the 25th the Area Army, which makes Warren believe that it's one of the Japanese commander's hideouts. However, Stanley suspects there's more to it and presses Warren for answers. Reese then reveals that they had discovered the mines that were once an operational center for Unit 731, a secret medical research unit infamous for lethal human experiments. Enraged, the team confronts Warren for not informing them or preparing them for such a situation, but he claims that he was unaware too. Following this, the captain decides to split up so that the injured Ario can rest while they search for the way out. However, Warren and his girlfriend insist on going with the captain, worrying that they might discover the treasure. As a result, Captain Tino, Sergeant Papa, Warren, and Suling set out to find an exit, while Dioko, Stanley, and Rie remain behind with Ario. A short while later, Tino's group stumbles upon another room containing cages. There, Warren discovers a helmet issued by the Australian government, indicating that those held in the room were prisoners of war. Meanwhile, 
Ario, who is resting on a pallet bench, hears a scraping noise. He sits up to investigate and is shocked to witness the ground shifting. Before he can alert the others, a hand suddenly grabs his leg and pulls him down into the hole. As the others rush to help him, they catch a glimpse of a mutant who quickly runs away. Stanley then demands answers from Rhi about the creature, but she is also clueless like him. Despite the uncertainty, the three of them jump into the hole to pursue the creature into the tunnels. Shortly after, Rie comes across a grim sight. Ario's body lying lifeless with his throat slit and eyes without pupils. Stanley consoles her and urges her to keep moving for their safety. But as soon as they turn around, Stanley is suddenly knocked down by the gas mask wearing figure. As Dioko searches for his team members, he stumbles upon a chamber filled with human remains, including the horribly mutilated corpse of the pirate from the beginning of the film. Moments later, the mutants start stalking him. He manages to gun one of them down, but numerous others emerge from the surroundings. Catching him off guard, a mutant hits him on the back of his head and seizes his rifle before fleeing. Dioko then tries reaching for his pistol, but another mutant attacks him, clawing at his eyes. He somehow manages to subdue the creature, but the damage has been done to his sight. More mutants surround him, so he starts firing in a random direction until his pistol jams. At this point, Dioko realizes that he's outnumbered and defenseless, so he drops his handgun and lets the creatures slaughter him. His full name was Dioko Ono. On the other hand, Tino's team is in the middle of exploring a room filled with medical notes, detailing the sorts of experiments the Japanese conducted at the bunker. During this, they hear one of their members screaming, sensing the urgency of the situation. They rush to leave the room, but the door suddenly closes, trapping them inside. In the next scene, Ryan Stanley finds themselves captured by the gas mask guy, who turns out to be a Japanese soldier. Holding them at sword point, he communicates with Ryan Japanese, who then translates it to Stanley. She explains how the soldier considers them to be prisoners of the Japanese Imperial Army. Despite her efforts to reason with him, the soldier refuses to believe that the war's over. Their conversation drags on for a few more minutes, and when the man is distracted, Stanley attacks and disarms him. He then removes the soldier's gas mask, revealing the face of an ashamed elderly man. After this, Ri shows him an old footage on her tablet, showing the final Japanese surrender in 1945. This revelation devastates the soldier, and he kneels in front of a body covered in the Japanese flag. Elsewhere, the other team is suddenly attacked by a mutant creature, and it stabs Warren's shoulder with a bone. Tino quickly retaliates by shooting at the creature, but it doesn't inflict any harm. This only switches the mutant's focus to Tino, and it charges towards him. Just when it seems he's going to get killed, Sergeant Papa grabs a broken metal rod and stabs the creature, ultimately killing it. Warren then examines the creature's head and translates the Japanese inscription, which reveals that it was an Australian POW. In the meantime, the soldier in the other room shares a story to Stanley and Ree. He explains that he and his deceased friend were assigned to guard the mine for years, but when the Japanese army departed in 1945, they were left sealed inside. He confesses to killing his friend because he wanted to surrender and leave. In addition, he reveals that the mutants are POWs imprisoned in the mine before them. The Japanese soldiers subjected these prisoners to some experiments that drove them insane, ultimately transforming them into the monsters they are now. After that, they opted to use their own people for the experiment. In an attempt to enhance their strength and youth, they administered some kind of injections to the soldiers like him, but it was another failed experiment. As Tino's team continues exploring the area, they come across a gruesome sight, a mutilated body, likely a victim of the experiments conducted in the mine. Its stomach is sliced open, and its brain is protruding from the skull. Shortly after, Warren discovers a syringe filled with an unknown liquid, along with flecks of gold, which he suspects is what the Japanese army used for their experiments. Zhang, this makes him upset, and he realizes that it's probably the last of the commander's treasures. While Tino and Papa attempt to open the door, Warren talks to his girlfriend. She asks for the reason why the gold was mixed with the liquids. Warren explains that it's believed to be the ancient elixir of life in the basis of alchemy. When he expresses his worry about leaving empty-handed, Su Ling suggests that they take the syringe with them asserting that it might be more valuable than the treasure. Hearing this, he hands over the syringe to her, asking her to keep it safe. Moments later, Tino and Papa successfully manage to open the door, revealing a shrine filled with dozens of creatures dressed in samurai suits of armor. In other words, they are the Imperial Guard. These guards suddenly spring to life and start advancing towards the group, scared the captain and sergeant open fire, but their bullets barely have any effect on the guards. Sensing the imminent threat, Tino instructs Warren and Su Ling to escape, while Papa stays behind to earn them some time. However, the sheer number of guards attack the sergeant before he can shut the chamber door, resulting in his tragic demise. 
Tina, Warren, and Su Ling run for their lives, and they eventually reach the cavern where Dioka was killed. As Tino proceeds to examine the body, Warren is suddenly attacked by a mutant. Despite being injured, Tino fights the creature and grabs a broken piece of bone to stab it to death. After this, they make their way through the sewage system, and finally end up in a room where Stanley, Ree, and the gas-masked man are in. Tino then asks the man if he knows the way out, to which Stanley replies that he has an idea. He mentions that the creatures often go out to hunt animals and find food for themselves. On the other hand, we see that Warren is barely holding onto his life due to his injury. In a desperate attempt to save her boyfriend, Su Ling administers him with the same syringe from earlier. Just then, the Imperial Guardsmen catch up to them, prompting the group to flee for their lives. However, the gas-masked man opts not to escape. He instead kneels in front of the guards, allowing them to slit his neck. Elsewhere, one of the Imperial Guards frees a mutant from the metal cage on its head, indicating that they're now working together. As the group is heading to what appears to be an exit, they are ambushed by two mutants. Tino and Stanley then engage in a brawl, while Su Ling frantically tries to open a door beside her. Ri also helps the men take out one of the creatures by stabbing it with a sharp-edged rock. By this time, Su Ling manages to open the door and leads her boyfriend inside. However, she selfishly locks the door, abandoning the rest of the group. Su Ling then discovers a tunnel that leads to the exit, but she is soon killed by Warren, who has now gone insane due to administration of the unknown formula. The three remaining group members desperately search for another escape route, as they are being cornered by both the Imperial Guards and the mutants. Soon after, Ri discovers a drain leading to a sewer system. She instantly opens its lid and summons her friends, who are guarding the door. But as the assailants are already on the verge of breaking the room door, the captain makes a brave decision. He urges Stanley and Ree to leave, while he stays behind to hold off the imminent danger. After this, Stanley and Ree end up in the water, with a ladder finds another underwater tunnel leading outside. She enters it first, but before Stanley can follow her, an Imperial Guard jumps in. Ree swims out of the tunnel and ends up resurfacing in the middle of a lake. She then proceeds to swim towards the shore, but another Imperial Guard emerges from the water. Despite her exhaustion, she tries to defend herself, but she is easily overpowered by the Guard. The movie ends with the guardsman swinging his sword at Ree's midsection, presumably killing her. So that was for this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos like this, activate notifications, and hit like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.